हेलो गाइस वेलकम यू ऑल टू शून्य आई एस वेलकम यू ऑल टू प्रिलिम्स क्रैश कोर्स फॉर करेंट अफेयर्स करेंट अफेयर्स एज यू ऑल नो इज द ब्रेड एंड बटर ऑफ योर प्रिपरेशन फॉर द प्रिलिम्स एग्जामिनेशन सुपर इंपॉर्टेंट इट इज करेंट अफेयर्स प्रोवाइड्स यू इंटर लिंकेजेस ऑफ टॉपिक्स दैट इज द डायनेमिक थिंग्स हैपनिंग इन द डे टू डे अफेयर्स नेशनल इंटरनेशनल इकोनॉमिक ओके पोलिटिकल साइंस एंड टेक्नोलॉजी स्पेस डिफरेंट इमर्जिंग टेक्नोलॉजीज आर देयर यूपीएससी वॉन्ट्स अ वेरी अवेयर सिटीजन शून्य इज कमिटेड टू ब्रिंग यू द बेस्ट ऑफ द करेंट अफेयर्स इन अ मोस्ट ऑर्गेनाइज मैनर यू हैव सीन आर स्टडी मटेरियल द मंथली मैगजीन्स इन द कंसाइज एंड मोस्ट सेकेंड फॉर्मेट सो दैट यू कैन स्टडी दैम वेल रिवाइज दैम वेल एंड स्टूडेंट्स द पॉइंट ऑफ प्रेजेंटिंग टू यू दिस क्लास is that you would have studied the current affairs maybe from myriad of sources but for revision having the current affairs after studying the current affairs monthly sometimes your thoughts your facts your analysis are disorganized for example one news has come in the month of january and another part of that news item is related in the month of may or april okay so what happens that the objective of this crash course is to very well organize the different arenas of the topics in a manner that all the economics at one place all the polity at one place all the science and technology at one place so that you can revise it in a organized manner and you can recall that in the examination you are getting this point next you need to understand that for example even if we are going subject wise into the subject also some classifications are there understanding all the news items for example fiscal policy and banking system including the taxation at one place what are the current news related to it what upsc is interested into it so what i have focused in the lectures of crash course that how do we know that which areas upsc is focusing we know it by the previous year questions students by the definition of syllabus upsc can ask anything but by the pyqs you can get a hold on the way the questions are being formed my priority would be in the class to focus on the previous year questions coming with respect to different different topics in the examination so that you are always on the toes looking into the eyes of upsc pata to chale ki kaun si information kitni important hai everything is in the news but what happens that when you go through this you will understand that the coverage 80% of coverage 20% of coverage will get in, get you the 80% of the whole so our objective is very clear the target of prelims 2024 is our objective revise current affairs through this crash course and you will find it very easy very relatable to solve your test series also and attempt the prelims 2024 examination but simultaneously students i would ask you one more thing that while these crash course is going on i am expecting you that you are well versed with your static portion dekho if you are not able to understand the definition of fiscal deficit you know how the rbi monetary policy is being governed from your static portion then it you will find it difficult to cope up with these lectures although i will try to convey the basics of it but to make it more relatable i want you that you should be well versed with basics of static portion whether it be economic development whether it be polity section getting my point so somewhere you need to understand while coming to the current affairs it is the bread and butter as i told you you need to have a base of understanding then you will be able to relate to these concepts now one more thing these concepts are paramount important for your preparation upsc you know makes some static questions out of the topics that are in the news that are in the news sometimes from the news items directly current affairs questions are not coming but from the news items they are forming certain questions from the static as well therefore static and current affairs interlinkage is very important see my objective is that most of my students clear the prelims examination so i i would be telling you some hard truths also that yes you need to work hard the the smart work is organizing your method making it very simple and jumping to the correct you know it requires little bit of hard work also smart work also requires hard work it doesn't mean that there is any shortcut getting my point so work with your basics 
you can work with other our program students programs are there for prelims crash course for static portions also if you have not done anywhere anything else you can join that as well and if you have little bit knack of static then you will get up with the current affairs very easily okay so let's start we are going to start with first economic development economic development i have divided the economic development into four sections into these four sections and miscellaneous and miscellaneous so students what happened that till now uh, just understand let's understand how we are going to cover everything till now we will be covering the present day from the january to present day news items okay most important news items in the economic development section divided in these four subtopics plus there will be some added bonus lectures as soon as we will then we will be covering the news of december january march and then in the april month of april you will get added lectures of economic development polity so what new items are there you will be getting there also so till here we are going to start first lecture will be fiscal policy banking and monetary policy then payment and financial market external sector payment and financial market external sector dekho these these things on the priority of your prelims i have divided this economic development syllabus is little bit different when it comes to mains their agriculture has a lot of importance industry employment and infrastructure energy sector and agriculture and different kinds of terminologies in the news economic terminologies in the news we'll be discussing that as well so fiscal policy banking and monetary policy how rbi in the basic of statics you will be reading about rbi monetary policy what changes are happening how federal reserve's policy cuts are related to it you know we need will be discussing that payment and financial market students you need to understand that the touchstone the touchstone of economic development policy is right now resilient economic policy one objective is we need to be resilient amid the different kinds of changes in the global economy for example recession is happening in us and european markets but still we are resilient one thing that we are focusing is resilience in the economy second thing that we are focusing in the economy is financial inclusion financial inclusion various policies schemes fintech industries they are coming for financial inclusion government is focused different government schemes whether we talk about rupee whether we talk about atal pension yojana whether we talk about aadhar cards jam trinity these all are about aadhar enabled payment system these all are about financial inclusion we will be talking also about commercial inclu inclusion so point is very clear you need to understand where upsc is focused accordingly we will prioritize our studies industry employment sector lfpr of women different reports and indices are there with respect to it infrastructure how different projects ppp model hybrid annuity model how they are being developed you will find in current affairs reits in reits how different methodology of government for bringing in funds for development of public infrastructure has been created we will look into it energy sector guys most important as you have seen energy transition we are focusing on energy transition from fossil based energy to renewable energy for that finance is required we will talk about debt for climate swap agreements are there into this economy so how about climate financing in the is impacting the global economic dynamics agriculture sector here we will look into certain crops every year you will find because the paper of prelims is superimposed with the paper of um your forest services therefore some component of agriculture becomes important there also so for crops every year one or two question whether they would be talking about coffee board of india turmeric board of india they are talking about certain cotton what are the climatic conditions for the growth of cotton they have talked about edible oil production in terms of value in terms of volume so these things some data here is extremely important for the prelims examination into this agriculture sector some technological missions like palm oil terminologies some key words are in the newspaper and students the added bonus into these class with which with uh, you will be equipped with is here i'm going to cover different kinds of test series also that whatever questions are there you will be able to have an extra edge over them so the shunya magazine will be covered 
the best important topics will be taken and you will be always ahead into the competition or objective is you will always be ahead into the competition so start religiously with the current affairs so first topic here we are going to start is fiscal policy and banking monetary policy okay fiscal policy and banking and monetary policy <clears throat> first topic here is federal fund rate federal fund rate students federal fund rate is the rate just try to understand some misconceptions has been there into it is the rate with which different banks different banks into the us united states exchange the money is that interest rate okay point is federal fund rate we need to understand that how it is impacting indian economy recently some changes have been done upsc is quite interested into it theek hai rbi monetary policy pe lot many questions have been asked just understand since you know what has happened students since 2008 9 the subprime crisis was there you will find that approximately for 10 years let's understand if you'll understand this concept you will be able to mark the correct answer in the examination for approximately 10 years we have seen that federal fund rate was near zero near zero means it was nearly 0.15% it was nearly 0.15% theek hai getting my point 0.15% there in the us markets recession was happening and fund rate and uh, federal fund rate was 0.15% during the time of pandemic what has happened i am talking about 2020 onwards during the time of pandemic the federal fund rate further dropped it was 0.05% dekh rahe ho kitna kam ho raha hai drop hota ja raha hai theek hai now the recently here in 2023 all of sudden within a year in 2023 within a year this federal fund rate has jumped more than 450 basis points 450 basis points it has jumped 450 now students understands if it jumps by 450 basis points it means that approximately it is right now 4.5% and catching up to 5.5% of federal rate increase in the interest rate is there समझ रहे हो नाउ नाउ लेट्स कम टू द पॉइंट दिस कंसेप्ट यू अंडरस्टूड दिस हैज दिस इज द बैकग्राउंड दिस इज द थिंग दिस इज द फैक्ट फॉर यू नाउ लेट्स एनालाइज इट हाउ इज इट गोइंग टू इंपैक्ट इंडिया हाउ इज इट गोइंग टू इंपैक्ट द पॉलिसी फिजिकल पॉलिसी मॉनेटरी पॉलिसी इन इंडिया दैट दैट फ्रॉम वेयर द क्वेश्चन विल कम फर्स्ट स्टेटमेंट दैट आई थिंक यू शुड बी नोटिंग डाउन इज इफ फेडरल फंड रेट इज इंक्रीज देन इन इंडिया द repo rate is increased or decreased it will also increase remember this sentence okay it will also increase we will understand it why so 2020 it is 0.5% here what was happened that recession was there in the us because of recession students because of recession people were not ready to spend money people were not getting jobs okay now all of sudden with recession because of inflation also this recession was there high prices of the commodities were there and people are not ready to fund money towards it therefore therefore they are like if fund rates if interest rates are all of sudden increase liquidity will be sucked out of the market they will suck the liquidity out of market jaise interest rate badhega people will not be taking more money rather people will be spending the money they already have banks will not have more and more liquid cash getting the point so what will happen here it will reduce this step is going to reduce liquidity or it will suck the liquidity into the market it will suck the money out of the market therefore inflationary pressures will reduce therefore basically this is a method from where they will check the recession they will reduce the recession in the us so for india how we are going to look towards it okay because of this process students thoda sa relate karna hai apne ko because of this process you know dollar will become stronger this is going to give value to the dollar dollar will become stronger point you need to understand if dollar becomes stronger what will happen
इफ डॉलर विल बिकम स्ट्रांगर देन थ्रू एफ पी आईज थ्रू एफ पी आईज और एफ आई आईज फॉरन इंस्टीट्यूशनल इन्वेस्टर्स फॉरन पोर्टफोलियो इन्वेस्टर्स दे आर पुटिंग देयर मनी इन टू स्टॉक मार्केट वॉट विल हैपन दे विल टेक बैक देयर मनी दे विल पुल बैक देयर मनी एंड दे विल पुल बैक टूवर्ड्स यूनाइटेड स्टेट्स दे विल पुल बैक टूवर्ड्स यूनाइटेड स्टेट्स दिस मनी विल बी टेकन बैक टू यूएस देखो यहां पर स्टूडेंट हम मिस्टेक करते हैं जस्ट अंडरस्टैंड दिस कंसेप्ट डॉलर विल बिकम स्ट्रॉगर देयर फोर by spending that money stock market of india i was talking about they will pull back this money towards united states to kya hoga indian stock market is dependent on these kind of foreign institutional investors this is also called as hot money or helicopter money that may come in the morning and go back in the evening that is dependent on the market sentiments of the people therefore rupee first of all our investment profile will decrease investment we want these capital to hold us back investment will decrease in the stock market moreover as dollar is getting stronger because most of the international trade is happening into the dollars rupee will become relatively weaker rupee will become relatively weaker rupee will become weaker therefore our more money more rupee is required to buy certain crude oil or importing products more rupee will be required to import certain products rupee will become more weaker now students you need to understand there is one thin line into the question you have to look into the language how upsc frames the question that is because dollar is getting stronger therefore dollar is getting stronger along with higher fed rates okay these two components are making it spend the money into us invest the money into us you need to understand united states the market of united states is quite a stable market stability is there the security is there for investing into the stocks for is investing into the equities comparison to that india is not a very stable market here that stability is not there even if one election happens you know if something wrong happens puri ki puri sentiments market ke bigad jate hain theek hai therefore this investment is not so secure the investor wants to secure its money therefore they are taking for to spend to to invest into more stable and secure market stable and secure market stable and secure market get this getting this point therefore now what rbi is going to do is rbi will increase their own interest rates okay the exchange rates and rbi will also suck certain liquidity rt rbi will, will also suck certain liquidity out of it point is some statements in the examination you will get that what will be the impact of fed rates increased or fed rates decreased now you know one data sometimes they are asking the questions like this in the last decade consistently it has been more than 5% fed rates no it is not that rather it was near to the zero all of sudden within one year we have seen that spike into it because they have changed it as a policy measure and it will it is going to impact india we need to be prepared for it for our resilient economy dekho to hame do front pe samajhna economy ko one is about resilience into the economy because post globalization the world has been coupled although indian economic policy has been so good that despite having recessions financial crises across the uh, centers we had been insulated from it we will, we can't call it immune but we had been insulated to a greater extent even during the time of pandemic we had k shaped recovery because of resilience into our economy i hope you got it now you understand when the fed raises rates foreign investors foreign investors pull money away from emerging markets india is a emerging market as higher rates give a boost to the dollar isi se ek interrelated topic hai 
that is called as de-dollarization. That's why because our own economy, such big economy, fastest growing major economy is still impacted by change in the dollar. Therefore, we are focusing towards de-dollarization. That topic we'll talk separately. In the terms, basically, we'll be talking it. Which erodes the shine of riskier equities like Indian equities. Riskier equities means emerging market equ equities. FPIs pull money out of the equity and bond markets. Our own share market, basically, equity and bond market. Indian bond market is yet to get matured. Abhi thoda matured nahi hua hai bond market. Because of that twin balance sheet problem is there in India. And it could weaken the rupee even as the dollar gets stronger with the rate hike. You get the point? Dollar will, will get stronger and it will weaken the rupee. Depreciation of rupee because the uh, rupee rupees value depreciates will increase the rupee cost of imported goods such as crude oil, chemicals and fertilizers. So they may relate these statements with the federal fund rates of the US. I hope you got it. Now just everyone tell me the answer of this question. This MCQ. This is very important students that after knowing the concepts, your ability should be developed that you can apply the concept to a relatively similar question. These kind of questions are being asked by UPSC. With reference to Indian economy, consider the following statements. If inflation is too high, Reserve Bank of India is likely to buy government securities. Which of the following? Just tell me the answer. I am just holding it for a second. Read the question and tell me the answer. Okay, now listen to me, students. You have to think with the logic. You need to build that knack of thinking. First statement, is it correct or wrong? Let's think about it. Agar inflation zada hai, inflation means what? Different definitions into static you have. Okay. Cost push inflation, price pull inflation, different things have been there. Now let's understand. Inflation means in simple words, in generic words, in layman terms, too much money chasing too few goods. Okay? Zada paise se hum kam goods kharidna cha rahe. Therefore, price hike is there. That is called as inflation in simple terms. So, inflation indicates that there is increase in liquidity into the market. Liquid cash into the market. Liquidity for currency is there into the market. Too much money is there into the market. Now, in case of inflation, if you want to reduce this inflation, it means that RBI wants to absorb this cash, absorb this liquidity from the market. Now, next, it, uh, uh, Reserve Bank of India is likely to buy government securities. If Reserve Bank of India will buy GSEC, government security, RBI will buy. If RBI is going to buy government securities, then it has to release money into the market. And this money will basically increase this liquidity. Therefore, this is wrong statement. Jada paisa hoga or inflation badega or zada paisa release karoge or zada inflation badega. It is not going to benefit. Therefore, first statement has to be wrong. If you eliminate the first statement, that too you will directly get the B answer correct. Two and three. Got it? Students, you need to think in that manner that this question demands that if by eliminating any one statement, you can get the correct answer. Second statement is if the rupee is rapidly depreciating. Rapidly depreciating it means that its value is rapidly depreciating. RBI is likely to sell dollars in the market. Okay. Relative to dollar, we have rupees strong. If we dollar, we will get more rupees. Deke, to rupees value will again depreciate. Yes, that is true. We will unload the dollar. RBI is likely to sell dollars in the market. That is a correct statement. If interest rates in the USA or Europe, see already UPSC has asked this question. Therefore, this topic is more important for us. That too in 2022 they have asked. 2023 mein to bahut major change aa gaya hai If interest rates in the US or European Union were to fall, kyunki usse mein fall ho tha, 0 0.15, 0 0.05 it was going there. Ha na? Now they will tell you if it is going to increase suddenly, what will be the impacts on Indian economy? Paul, that is likely to induce RBI to buy 
डॉलर्स यस आरबीआई इज गोइंग टू बाई मोर एंड मोर डॉलर्स बिकॉज इजी होगा हमारे लिए डॉलर बाई कर पाना बिकॉज राइट नाउ रुपी इज अप्रिशिएटिंग रिलेटिव टू इट इफ देयर इंटरेस्ट रेट्स आर फॉलोइंग जब उनके इंटरेस्ट रेट्स इंक्रीज होते हैं तो रुपी डेप्रिशिएट होता है दीज टू स्टेटमेंट्स आर सिनोनिमस बेसिकली वन लॉजिकली इंप्लाइज द अदर देर फोर स्टेटमेंट टू एंड थ्री इज करेक्ट विच एमंग द फॉलोइंग लुक एट द प्रोलिम्स ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी वन हाउ मच इंपॉर्टेंट द टॉपिक इज टू यू Which among the following steps is most likely taken at the time of an economic recession? What will an economy do? Look at the question. Take one second time and mark the answer. देखो, at the time of economic recession, students. Economic recession means economic slowdown. Economic activity is not picking up. People are not transferring monies. Banks are not ready to rent lend. यहाँ पे एक word है. We will be talking it into the terms that is called as doom's loop. Doom's loop. You need to understand. Economic recession recently in Sri Lanka we have seen. European Union is heading towards economic recession or doom's loop we call it. एक डूम स्लूप इज इंपॉर्टेंट वर्ड बेसिकली वॉट है हॉल्ट इन वन इकोनॉमिक एक्टिविटी विल टॉक अबाउट इट इन द टर्म सेक्शन ऑफ द इकोनॉमी इज लीडिंग टू द हॉल्ट इन अनदर सेक्शन ऑफ द इकोनॉमी एंड ओवरऑल इकोनॉमी स्लोज डाउन ओके वी विल टॉक अबाउट इट बट इट स्टार्ट डूम स्लूप लीड्स टू इकोनॉमिक रिसेशन स्लो डाउन इन सच केसेज वॉट वी विल बी डूइंग यू नो अजाइल एंड बार्बल स्ट्रैटेजी ऑफ यूपीएससी ऑफ इकोनॉमिक सर्वे अजाइल एंड बार्बल स्ट्रैटेजी दीज वर्ड्स आर इंपॉर्टेंट टू यू इन टर्म्स ऑल्सो अजाइल एंड बार्बल स्ट्रैटेजी वॉट इट वॉज हाउ हाउ डिड वी टैकल द पैंडमिक इन टर्म्स ऑफ इकोनॉमिक डेवलपमेंट हाउ डिड वी कीप आर सेल्फ रेजिलियंट हाउ डिड वी गेट द केक शेप्ड रिकवरी उस समय भी तो रेसेशन आने की पूरी चांसेस थी इकोनॉमिक स्लो डाउन वॉज हैपनिंग कंपनीज वर लेइंग डाउन देर लेइंग ऑफ देर एम्प्लॉज therefore you need to understand this concept on this concept students i just hold on to it this is current affairs news but the concept is purely static if you get hold of this concept you will be understanding all the current affairs news very proficiently and you are going to have some questions in the examination okay cut in the tax rates accompanied by increase in the interest rate okay increase in expenditure on public projects now i'll tell you one more thing that you can see this certain statements like increase in expenditure on public project increase in the tax rates accompanied by the reduction of interest rate no correct answer is b increase in the expenditure on public projects understand here public projects okay public projects public investment capital goods these are important words people uh, students in the beginning doesn't understand and appreciate there has been a direct question into upsc prelims as well on these topic which of the following can be called as public investment into agriculture public investment whenever we call investment it means that we are looking for rate of return return on investment break even points okay we are looking for roi return on investment so public projects it means that government is going to build some infrastructure durable assets just like in manrega we are building so expenditure on public projects is going to benefit us we will understand in detail in the government schemes will be understanding it how canons principle will be used over here okay so let's move ahead to the next topic current scenario of taxation in india see for some quarters we have achieved that but right now you need to understand a different perspective of indian economy that yes direct taxes and indirect taxes students direct taxes constitute 6% with respect to the gdp we are talking with respect to the gdp direct taxes or indirect taxes pehle to thoda sa with uh, let me relate it with you in the beginning direct taxes are directly collected from the individuals individuals corporations okay directly collected from them for example income tax corporate tax hai right? na these are called as direct taxes indirect tax are not directly collected from particular individuals but in general from all individuals for example if you are going to buy a toothpaste doesn't matter whether you are rich you are poor you have to pay the indirect tax getting this point 
तो यहाँ पे स्टैटिक पोर्शन यू नीड टू अंडरस्टैंड द डिफरेंस बिटवीन डायरेक्ट टैक्सेज इन डायरेक्ट टैक्सेज वॉट कंस्टिट्यूट दैम नाउ हियर यू नीड टू अंडरस्टैंड वन मोर थिंग वॉट इज गुड फॉर द इकोनॉमी डायरेक्ट टैक्सेज आर इफ डायरेक्ट टैक्सेज आर मोर दैट इज गुड और इन डायरेक्ट टैक्सेज आर मोर दैट इज गुड प्रॉब्लम टिल नाउ इन द इंडियन इकोनॉमी हैड बीन दैट मोस्टली इन डायरेक्ट टैक्सेज वर गुड See, understand, students. Direct tax and indirect, just just like GST is indirect taxes. Indirect tax has impact on poor and vulnerable people also. Whereas direct tax are only for the income earning. It is on the income basically for the corporations, for the individuals. More moreover, we have proportional in. Uh, taxes over there proportional structure is there a person who is earning more income will be giving more tax a person who is earning less income will be giving less tax it's proportionate system but here in the indirect taxes it is not proportionate okay so students basically it is good for a economy if indirect taxes constitute less amount than the direct taxes direct taxes should be bigger till now the problem with the indian economy had been mostly indirect taxes were more but the time has changed it is good for us that now direct taxes are more than indirect taxes it is 6% of the gdp direct taxes and indirect taxes 5.1% of the gdp dekho ye question upsc mein already aa chuka hai tax to gdp ratio tax to gdp ratio tax to gdp ratio you need to understand here the related term is tax buoyancy tax buoyancy you need to understand this word as well students tax tax buoyancy tax buoyancy upsc has asked this question in prelims 2015 what do you mean by tax buoyancy now here you need to understand any incremental change in the collection of taxes with respect to increase in the gdp is called as tax buoyancy i am again repeating myself any incremental increase in the tax with respect to the increase in gdp or per increase in the gross domestic product is called as tax buoyancy yahan pe catch hai chhota sa i'll tell you there is a catch in this definition which students sometimes don't understand theek hai have patience and just understand that First of all, let's come to the facts that direct taxes now constitute six percent, indirect taxes five point one percent. Now, tax to GDP, we will add both of them. Six plus five point one is equal to eleven point one with respect to our GDP. So, tax to GDP ratio right now in India is eleven point one percent. Okay. Soon we are targeting towards sixteen percent tax to GDP ratio. Well, we are looking at, at it now. In tax buoyancy, the catch is you know what happens that. Who does a understand? What if if this ratio we can say that it, this ratio is x okay i can increase the value of x by reducing the gdp as well tax collection by keeping the tax collection constant if the economy you know contracts gdp hamara contract ho jayega so tax buoyancy as a figure will look good but it is actually not good for the economy gdp kam ho raha hai tax collection utna hai you are getting this point gdp is reduced therefore tax buoyancy may look yes it as a number it can indicate better to you but this is not a good number okay economy is soon going to collapse therefore when we talk about talk tax buoyancy therefore we are talking about either constant gdp or increasing gdp not with reducing gdp therefore the definition again listen to it after understanding the catch the change in the tax the change in the tax with respect to incremental increase in the gdp is called as tax buoyancy it means that incremental increase has to happen into the gdp positive increment should be there or it should be constant then only it will be called as tax buoyancy getting this point so this has been the correct scenario of indian taxation overall just understand little bit macro figures right now theek hai goldilocks scenario uh this word is important to us goldilocks goldilocks zone upsc has asked this question one times into prelims examination with respect to space indian space policies goldilocks are the habitable places where human beings you know can find a survival 
in the cosmic uh, place apart from the earth this is called as goldilocks zone here we call it goldilocks econ scenario in economy goldilocks scenario in an economy now you need to understand students what happens that sometimes we find a lot of inflation sometimes we find a recession monetary policy committee always you know monitors different kinds of data so that indian economy is not heading towards too much of inflation thoda inflation is good you understand this point thoda inflation is good we want little bit of inflation therefore we have that bracket for the inflation little bit of inflation is good you understand for the growth now <coughs> now it should not be total recession it should not be too high inflation therefore we are basically looking towards a goldilocks scenario for the economy okay just understand the definition of it here the gdp remains constant consistent or gradual increase in the gdp all of sudden gdp will not increase all of sudden there won't be a collapse into the economy it describes an ideal state for an economy whereby the economy is not expanding or contracting by too much little bit of contraction little bit of expansion may happen but not by too much sudden impacts won't be there goldilocks economy has steady economic growth steady economic growth gradual economic growth preventing a recession it will prevent a recession but not so much growth itna bhi zyada tez grow nahi karna hai that inflation rises by too much as soon as gdp will you know reach uh, so high inflation may occur key features goldilocks scenario low rate of unemployment now understand the key words over here that you should be writing down it is not saying that more employment but it's it is saying that less number of unemployments less people will be unemployed it is not saying that more people will be highly employed steady gdp growth rate and relatively low retail inflation and interest rates this is called as goldilocks scenario and goldilocks phase is usually temporary because basically we need to create a balance between recession and inflation any one is mostly high or low this ideal state is called as goldilocks phase okay nature and sets in typically after an adverse shock to the economy during the recovery and growth phase it's a temporary phase therefore it cannot be permanently achieved we need to balance between recession and inflation keeping the ideal state of goldilocks scenario in our mind so next topic is it is incremental cash reserve ratio now you understand while the policy of rbi you would have seen that there is slr statutory liquidity ratio there is crr cash reserve ratio now students in this crr this is the by the name also it is very clear crr it is cash reserve ratio okay cash reserve ratio basically cash is liquid to contain the liquidity and ensure that this liquidity can be provided by the bank to their customers as an ndtl net demand and time liabilities what is net demand and time liability the money that you are having in your savings account you can demand it any time from the bank time is like recurring deposits fixed deposits if you are keeping money into the bank with respect to this then with respect to the maturity period of the timeline these are called as time deposits demand and time so cash is to provide the liquidity to the consumers whenever it is demanded moreover crr is basically fixed at 4% it is 4% fixed if crr is increased more <clears throat> because crr is a perennial tool permanent tool so if you'll increase the crr from 4% to 6% or 7% then what will happen banks will have less liquidity all the time therefore economy cannot grow faster therefore a different tool with the rbi uh, as a temporary measure mind it it is a temporary measure is icrr incremental cash reserve ratio you need to understand the principle behind it okay so whenever a bank a particular bank it is 4% crr is 4% just understand this concept first that if rupee 100 crore is deposited then 4% is has been kept safe 
ओके नाउ नाइन्टी सिक्स क्रोर बैलेंस फॉर डिस्ट्रीब्यूटिंग लोन एंड डूइंग अदर एक्टिविटीज इज विद द बैंक फोर परसेंट ऑफ इट दैट इज फोर क्रोर रुपीज विल बी केप्ट सेफ नाउ टू यू नो बैलेंस द इन्फ्लेशन टू बैलेंस द लिक्विडिटी टू एब्सॉर्ब मोर लिक्विडिटी फ्रॉम द बैंक what will happen now as a temporary measure rbi will put 10% on the increase understand this word on the increase in their nditl liabilities for example a bank has a lot of cash as an nditl net demand all of sudden for example fixed deposits into a bank increased recurring deposits into the bank has increased then what will happen if there is net increase the increase it is not on the total amount whereas crr is on the total amount of nditl whereas it is on the increase in the nditl 10% of the increase in nditl you understand the concept of velocity okay this is of total value this is of the change in the value increase in the value of nditl 10% will be incremental cash reserve ratio it is similar to the crr icrr is similar to the crr wherein banks need to set aside a certain portion of their money with the rbi that will be 10% so number yaad rakhna hai apne ko 10% it is and it will be on the increase in the nditl so look at the question plims 14 plims 2014 the question is in the context of indian economy which of the following are the purposes of statutory statutory reserve requirements statutory reserve requirements solve this question and tell me the answer this is basically a b c d look at the statements take your time you can pause the video why do we need what is the purpose behind it look at here students to enable the central bank to control the amount of advances the banks can create true this is right statement to make the people's deposit with banks safe and liquid okay safety is there and liquidity basically it will provide more liquidity to prevent the commercial banks from making excessive profits no this is not our objective we do not want to prevent commercial banks to stop them from making excessive profits rather the problem is in india you will find that high npas are there non performing assets are too much we want we want them to be more and more profitable we do not want that their profit should be stopped at any cost we want them to be profitable the statement seems wrong to force the banks you see the word to force the banks to have sufficient vault cash to meet their day to day requirements this is not the objective of it okay so fourth is also wrong correct answer should be b okay this is udgam portal see these kind of questions comes in the match the column okay so udgam portal it is basically unclaimed deposits gateway to the access information some of you would have some accounts you know during the time of your school or colleges you would have your bank account maybe you would have opened that account but will not be operating right now it would have had for example 10000 15000 money into it some people who had been doing their jobs the amount of gratuity or provident fund amount that has been logged and many a times people are not reimbursing it getting that amount from the bank or from the insurance agencies for example into lic your amount has matured but you have not been able to collect it back how do we this is called as logged fund this fund is logged even bank cannot give it to anybody else it is on your name any person producing documents will be given that money bank cannot utilize it as well therefore this these are called as unclaimed deposits therefore rbi along with indian financial technology and allied services and participating banks banks have collaborated for developing this portal what is the purpose of this udgam portal because rbi is involved into it it is very much important for us okay therefore what is important here this udgam portal is for the unclaimed bank deposits it refers to the funds held in savings or current accounts held in savings or current accounts that have remained inactive for approximately 10 years for duration of 10 years or in case of fixed deposits have not been withdrawn within 10 years from the maturity date 
then only it will be called as and it will be listed on the Udgam portal. You can put some of your details and then you can access these funds. Centralized Information Management System, SIMS, because it is with the RBI, therefore it is very much important for us. SIMS, understand, UPSC may give you that it is by SEBI. Credit rating agencies, on that the question has been asked by UPSC recently into the prelims. And then it is, you, you need to understand that the SIMS is a data warehouse. How does this monetary policy committee work? They need to work with different varieties of data. And the, this is a platform for data mining. It's a next generation data warehouse where all kinds of data related to financial transactions, you know, external market, consumer sentiments, confidence into the rupee will be monitored. It will improve monetary policy making through refined economic analysis and management of the information related to the financial data of India. Centralized information management system, SIMS. It will disseminate more data for public use and support online statistical analysis by external users as well. Okay, it is by RBI. Just remember this fact. Simple fact. Bahut zyada yaad nahi karna apne ko prelims ke liye. Okay. Financial Services Institution Board, FSIB. Basically students, previously there, were, there was Banks Board Bureau. Uh, Banks Board Bureau. What has happened that it was recommended by P.J. Nayak Committee. Let's understand little bit uh, related concept. That is our NPS, non-performing assets were higher into the public sector banks, PSBs. Okay, so P.J. Nayak Committee suggested that we want to infuse the culture of private sector bank. Okay, scheduled commercial private sector banks where the customer is not treated just like a beneficiary but is treated more like a client. Therefore, we need the top management should be recruited by Bank Board Bureau. On BBB, UPSC has asked the question in 2016 prelims. Therefore, this autonomous body was tasked to improve governance of public sector banks. Now, this has been replaced with Financial Services Institution Board. Financial Services Institution Board. Okay. And hence, it has been basically that we want more efficient. See. Therefore, you, you can see the functions over here, what previously Bank Board Bureau was doing. It recommended selection of the chiefs of the government-owned banks and financial institutions to help banks in developing, strategizing, capital-raising plans, how they will you know, make more and more capital out of it. Therefore, it has been replaced by this FSIB. Remember, this is a new organization, very important for the prelims 2024, very, very important for the prelims examination. Now, primary role, let students understand. Primary role kya hai? Primary role is about manpower management. Here also you can see that previously this body was doing selection of the chiefs of the bank. Basically, how the top management is going to work. Here, you will find, identify the manpower capabilities, make different kinds of recommendations for the appointment of full-time members, executive chairmen, state-run financial services and institutions thereof. Now, this head of the chairman of the FSIB, Financial Services Institution Board, will be nominated by the central government. Central government is going to nominate and they are going, this chairman, headed, this chairman will be heading and will be recommending that who is going to head different kinds of banks, top management of different banks, public sector banks, understand students, public sector banks. The board would comprise the secretaries of Department of Financial Services, chairman of IRDAI and deputy governor of the RBI. Not governor, but deputy governor of RBI. Remember this, deputy governor of RBI. Three part-time members who are experts in banking and three more from the Insurance sector. Insurance sector, here you can see that IRDI and insurance sector and three more uh, part-time members will be there. They will be looking into the appointment of the banks where we can reduce the non-performing assets. This body will be under the Department of Financial Services by replacing the Bank Board Bureau. Bank Board Bureau will be replaced by it. Okay. Small things which are important, the purpose of this body, you can remember in the examination, it is going to help you. Corporate Debt Market Development Fund. Here you need to understand corporate debt market. If I talk about corporate debt market, we have understood a little bit more, you know, here. 
ट्विन बैलेंस शीट प्रॉब्लम ट्विन बैलेंस शीट प्रॉब्लम ऑन वन हैंड वी आर हैविंग हाई एनपीएस नॉन परफॉर्मिंग एसेट्स अदर प्लस व्हाट वी आर हैविंग स्टॉल्ड प्रोजेक्ट्स प्रोजेक्ट्स of corporations or we can call it poor balance sheet balance sheet of corporations poor balance sheet of corporations this is called as twin balance sheet problem now students what for the development basically these corporations should not be taking much money from the banks from the banks rather if our corporate bond market corporate bond market needs to get matured it means that they should be if big public infrastructure projects is going to happen they should be taking money from the corporate bond market not from the banks rather from the niche banks called as development banks these kind of projects can be funded development banks i'm talking about not from the normal banks for special long term gestation period the money can be provided for those projects hence students to resolve this problem right now sebi has come up with providing certain support to the corporate bond market providing support or slowly starting to develop the corporate bond bond market understand it is this is a this was a structural problem into the economy it can't be resolved very soon therefore long term support like 15 years it will be extended to 25 years maybe in the coming time therefore it is a long term support for development of corporate bond market dekho tenure corporate debt bond market is 15 years it can be extended as per the cbi's mandate this is not by the rbi but it is by the cbi that you need to remember okay now understand why do we need this basically what happens that corporations are taking loans from the banks now the corporations can raise money from the share market itself they can raise money from the share market itself if they want to raise money from the share market then sometimes some periods are there when economy is not doing great people are not ready to invest uh, just look at your own example some of you might be you know trading on zero das you know so what will happen if you have good inflow of money income is good gdp is running good economy is growing to fir aap invest karoge share market mein but what if you are not getting income you will not spend in invest in share market at that time from where they will get money therefore they have to look towards bank इसीलिए सेबी हैज कम अप विथ अ गारंटी प्लान वेन एवर द कॉर्पोरेट मार्केट इज अंडर स्ट्रेस देन फ्रॉम दिस फंड सेबी इज गोइंग टू सपोर्ट देम समझ रहे हो बात को देर फोर सेबी इज गोइंग टू सपोर्ट देम सो दैट द कॉर्पोरेशन कैन बी डिपेंडेंट ऑन द कॉर्पोरेट बॉन्ड मार्केट इट सेल्फ देखो सी डी एम डी एफ कॉर्पोरेट डेट मार्केट डेवलपमेंट फंड स्टैब्लिश एज एन अल्टरनेट इन्वेस्टमेंट फंड alternate investment fund see dekho these investment funds are actually sovereign funds collected from different countries for example japan alternate fund alternate investment funds master funds there is a lot of classification class 1 class 2 class 3 type of investment funds are there these funds will be utilized for long term development of infrastructure jaise infrastructure bahut time mein develop hoga then they have some very low interest rates also then we can repay back that money to the sovereign uh, funds to the uh, country from where we have taken that money okay it will purchase investment grade just grade corporate debt securities now understand investment grade aisa nahi ki where already the company is not performing well this fund through this fund we are not going to sebi is not going to purchase those kind of corporate debt but investment grade grading will be there इन्वेस्टमेंट ग्रेड कॉर्पोरेट डेट सिक्योरिटीज ड्यूरिंग द मार्केट स्ट्रेस अच्छे हम डेट्स खरीदेंगे उस समय बेसिकली विल प्रोवाइड सेबी विल प्रोवाइड देम द लिक्विडिटी टू कंटिन्यू देयर बिजनेस टू एक्सपैंड देयर बिजनेस फॉर डिफरेंट काइंड ऑफ कंजम्पन दिस फंड विल हेल्प द मार्केट बाई प्रोवाइडिंग लिक्विडिटी एक्सेस दिस इज द ऑब्जेक्टिव 
if they need liquidity in the time of stress from this fund through the corporate bond market, they can get liquidity, enough liquidity. In such times of contribution to the fund shall be mandatory for specified debt-oriented mutual fund schemes and asset management companies. It is easy. So these companies, basically they will be ascertaining mandatorily that this, this is uh, uh, investment grade corporate debt so that you can uh, say we can invest in them during the market stress debt market faces redemption pressures in the open market especially schemes with long maturity periods people just want to break away from these things therefore this is how the SEBI is going to help it out additional surveillance mechanism let's understand one more thing related to SEBI additional surveillance mechanism now students some certain shares shares are there okay hindenburg report was there you know now nse national stock exchange nse has placed adani enterprises adani ports and ambuja cement under additional surveillance mechanism asm it is called as additional surveillance mechanism as a synonym you can understand as a prompt corrective action norms by the rbi when rbi does not find the balance sheet of a particular you know banks that they are not performing well then it issues pca norms similarly here sebi gets them additional surveillance mechanism so that investor becomes aware that it is breaking the circuits like circuit breaking it means the price is showing high variability high volatility maybe it could be because of certain mismanagement into the books maybe it could be due to high sentiments by the people maybe it could be because of certain reports coming therefore investor should take a caution while investing into it or while taking money out of the shares therefore uh, we have it for investor protection and education investor protection and education what is asm framework in stock market it is basically an additional surveillance measure and part of sebi you remember this word sebi it is by the sebi and exchange initiative to enhance market integrity to enhance market integrity and safeguard the interest of the investors this much is simple for you for the prelims examination okay so types of asm long term additional surveillance measures are there and short term also measures are there so for some time like two weeks three weeks if we if additional activity is seen into the price volatility of particular shares then it will be there short listing is done on various factors upsc may give you in the examination one two three four five which of the following factors can contribute of putting the particular listed companies on the NSE these companies are listed on the NSE into the ASM norms like high and low variation client concentration a typical kind uh, clientele is maintained close to close price variation market capitalization volume variation delivery percentage number of unique pans PE okay CE and PE are price variables how the price increasing or one is price decreasing so different kinds of price variation volume variation and volatility volatility on these parameters it is being put follow on public offer okay understand this concept one thing is called as this is fpo one thing is called as ipo ipo means initial public offering ipo means initial public offering students initial public offering is the situation when a corporation a company finds that it is ready to get public initial public offering a private corporation a limited liability company a private firm may decide that it is going to get public public means now it is open for the public to invest their money into the corporation therefore they get listed this is called as listing of companies listing of corporations to get public okay to get public it means that public invest public can invest into their shares can buy their equities therefore what happens the corporation you know 
divides it, its equity in the form of shares and distributes in the market. So initial public offerings बहुत ज़्यादा चल रहा है market में समय recently the DOMS IPO have come people have applied for it. Okay, now like Zomato IPO, so many Nike's IPO has been there. Initial public offering. Now understand students. You may UPSC may ask you certain questions. We will just understand from it from here. That listing of corporations to get public money, it will provide funding to this. Okay, it will provide funding. Now here, IPO is followed by another IPO. Just try to understand. If certain shares have been released, if certain shares have been released in the initial public offering, then what happens that again, if company wants to take certain money, the shares has been, you know, diluted into the market in the initial public offering. But again, the particular corporation wants more public shares. देखो उनका शेयर की वैल्यू चेंज होती रहती है एज पर द मार्केट सेंटिमेंट बट द शेयर आर विद द पब्लिक ओके शेयर बाई बैक इज ऑल्सो वन अनदर कॉन्सेप्ट विल टॉक इट लेटर ऑन बट अंडरस्टैंड हेयर वॉट हैपन्स इफ दे वॉन्ट मोर मनी फ्रॉम द पब्लिक देन वॉट दे डू दे डू एफ पी ओ आफ्टर आई पी ओ दे डू एफ पी ओ दिस इज फॉलो ऑन पब्लिक ऑफर फॉलो ऑन अगेन सर्टन देर आर टू मैथड देखो यहां पर समझना है वन मैथड कुड बी डायल्यूशन वन मैथड कुड बी डायल्यूशन डायल्यूशन ऑफ द इक्विटी डायल्यूशन ऑफ इक्विटी सेकेंड मैथड कुड बी नो डायल्यूशन ऑफ इक्विटी नो डायल्यूशन ऑफ इक्विटी Rather, and third method could be at the market price. At the market price, different three methods are there: dilution of equity, no dilution of equity, and at the market price. Recently, what has happened that you, if, if I talk about dilution of equity, it means that. New equity, for example, twenty-five percent previously the equity has been issued into the IPO. Now they want to issue more ten percent, twenty percent. This can dilute the equity of the corporation. Without dilution, if the investor or if the equity holder previously had it, now they want to resell it back on the follow-up price at a different price and at the market price is you know diluting the equity with. As per the market price, if they want to buy certain shares and increase the market price, then it is called as at the market price. Recently, what has happened? Hindenburg report was there. Hindenburg report because of that certain revelations were there, certain allegations were there. Because of that, previously Adani Enterprises has decided that twenty thousand crore as. FPO they will be putting Adani Enterprises. Now they have called it back because they know they are not going to get good price from the market. They are not going to get good price from the public. By going public with FPO is not going to help them at this condition. अब मुझसे पूछोगे सर, which one is more riskier? Students, IPO is more riskier than the FPO because in the in, uh, initial public offer, basically what happens that. The corporations want that their valuation, you know, valuation of their share should be pegged highest possible. Whereas in FPO, you know already the market value, market dynamic sentiments. Therefore, FPO is comparatively less riskier than the IPO. Got this point? So let's move on. Swami Investment Fund. Swami Investment Fund. it is by the ministry of finance basically it provides a special window for affordable and mid income housing for affordable and mid income housing fund you know pm awas yojana pradhan mantri awas yojana now we are focusing on developing certain middle income Households, okay, giving them pakka makans. PM Awa software is also being used. But what happened, students? Certain households that have already been constructed, they are stalled projects because somewhere finishing of the housing has not been done, or the brick and mortar structure has been created. Certain electricity facilities have not been provided. Okay, so some projects have been stalled because of lack of funds. पैसे नहीं थे इसलिए थोड़े पे काम रुका हुआ है. Therefore, okay. 
Swami Investment Fund, this was formed to complete the construction of these stalled projects and RERA registered affordable and middle income category housing projects. Real Estate Regulatory Authority, if you are going to construct, for example, some big mall, uh, some, you know, housing societies, therefore, you need to be registered with Real Estate Registration Authority. RERA registered projects for affordable and middle income category. If they need fund, for example, bank is not ready to provide fund, then who is going to give? Therefore, Swami Investment Fund is going to give you money. You complete the project. People will come and live there. You can pay back the money. Okay. Which are stuck due to paucity of funds. Therefore, Swami Investment Fund is for the construction of the houses. Okay. Where the projects have been stalled. It is sponsored by Ministry of Finance. Managed by SBI Cap Ventures. Okay. SBI Cap Ventures. A wing of SBI. A unit of State Bank of India, SBI Cap Ventures. Yaad rakhna hai SBI Cap, okay? It is a government-backed fund that was set up as a category to alternative investment fund. AIF, you know, alternative investment fund, I have told you. Debt fund registered with SEBI, launched in 2019. Okay, category 2 AIF, alternative investment fund, launched with SEBI. Now, students understand here, sometimes students get confused that SBI. There is a concept called as DSIBs. DSIBs. Domestically systematically important banks. Okay. This is recognized by RBI itself. That if this these banks fail, then this can devastate the whole of the Indian economy. Therefore, we recognize RBI recognizes certain domestically important banks and in which SBI is one of the DSIBs. Okay. Basically, Swami Investment Fund, just remember this for the exemption, Ministry of Finance and it is for the construction of the projects of the middle and affordable in, uh, income household projects for the construction of households that have been stalled because of the paucity of funds and will be managed by SBI Cap Ventures. Insurance Surety Bond. Insurance Surety Bond. Now, you can see that here. Insurance, you know, whenever, like health insurance, you people would be understanding, we are paying certain premium and we understand if we are not healthy enough and get hospitalized in certain circumstances, then the particular insurance company is going to bear for the expenditure on the health. Get it? Insurance sector. Insurance sector is very important. Therefore, we will look into the government schemes that Ayushman Bharat Yojana, Jan Arogya Yojana, is about insurance itself. Basically, we insurance provide kar rahe, 5 lakhs insurance to the people as a health sector to reduce the out-of-pocket expenditure. Similarly, in India, if I am talking about infrastructure projects, tum dekhte ho ke how many infrastructure projects we have started but not able to complete it? Because of sometimes the third party, you know, infrastructure project is there and with, we have contract with third party that they are going to provide me some cement, some labor, some, you know, different kinds of input goods into it timely so that we can complete the project on time so that i can give the loan back if i have taken from the bank and i can be profitable in the limited time this problem is there in the infrastructure development projects to solve this problem there there are insurance surety bonds so that you can insure the project insurance is there for the project if any issue is happening with the other party then insurance company will come and pay for the price Getting this point? Now, let's understand this concept. Okay. One is called as principal and another is called as obligee. Here is surety is provided by the insurance company. Basically, understand. For example, it, if two companies are there, one is the principal and one is the obligee. We can call them A and B. They are coming into a legal agreement. They are coming into a contract, legal contract that if timely services are not provided then the insurance company will come and pay them for that they need to pay a premium premium okay so obligee requires that the principal purchase a bond to attain a license or performance a service usually government agency obligee and the principal 
it purchases the bond and agrees purchases the bond from the insurance company to perform the work in compliant manner ultimately financially responsible ye jo financially responsible hai this is very important so they will purchase a bond from the insurance company they will pay the premium also and obligee basically these are government entities giving projects so this contract will be established now here insurance company that guarantees the work of the principal and is liable liability is on the insurance company for claims against the principal up to the bond amount big projects are there 50 crore 60 crore 500 crore then insure it can be insurance can be done like 200 crores rupees will be borne by the insurance company if it is not performing well they can have some terms and conditions tncs with the principal as well <coughs> security arrangement for the infrastructure projects and insulate the contractor as well as the principal sabko contractor ko and principal ko they get insulated from any variability if the project is not done then okay insurance company will come and save them it is a three party contract if the definition comes in the examination by which one party that is the surety guarantees the performance this insurance company guarantees the performance or obligations of the second party this principal this going to guarantee that the principal is come going to complete its job if it is not going to complete it will purchase a bond and sign it it if it, they will not second party to the third party the obligee this is the obligee it is going to ascertain that yes principal is going to complete its work under time insurance surety bonds allowed by insurance regulatory and development authority i r d a i dekho ye regulatory authority hai regulatory body hai sometimes on the regulatory bodies also question pooch liye jate hain exam mein has been brought as a replacement of bank guarantees this is called as bgs now ab now students will ask that sir is it mandatory is it voluntary dekho right now it is not mandatory but there is a shift from bgs bank guarantees to this surety bond insurance surety bond theek hai so the next topic is so cooperative banks right now cooperative banks are being promoted they are different from commercial banks students understand they are different from commercial banks cooperatives is formed with group of people they basically lend the money amongst themselves says themselves and try to be more viable ministry of cooperatives have been formed ministry of cooperatives have been formed ministry of cooperatives basically just like commercial banks now rbi is also keen about the functioning of the cooperative banks how they are working okay so recently a committee was an expert committee was constituted that recommended for four tier regulation of the cooperative banks in about the cooperative banks one more thing that you need to know there are they, they can be classified as rural cooperatives and urban cooperatives and understand students basically these cooperative banks are registered under state acts basically different states have different cooperative acts okay or if they have valuation more than 50 crore rupees okay they have 50, more than 50 crore rupees then multi state cooperative societies act also they can be registered now for the particularly urban cooperatives they have lot of funding urban cooperative banks recently reserve bank of india has notified these vital measures compare it with the pca norms prompt prompt corrective action norms to strengthen the urban cooperative banks like one time settlements now first time through this urban cooperatives you urban cooperatives have been brought at par with respect to commercial banks about writing off for example somebody has taken loan among the people at that time cooperative believed that the person is financially sound enough to return that money but because of some reasons that money became npa after 90 days then sma1 sma2 the classification of the you know npa is there but after good long time the cooperatives can write it off they are now at par with the commercial banks now these ucbs urban cooperatives if they are working in a good manner they are commercially viable banks managing their you know capital adequacy ratio therefore they can open new branches into different states also and without permission they can open new branches up to 10% of their present capacity and maximum five branches 
maximum five branches of the number of branches in the previous financial year without prior approval with prior approval of rbi they can open many more branches also rbi has decided to extend the timeline for ucbs to achieve the priority sector lending norms see priority sector whatever money they are giving as loan that loan should be belonging to some priority sectors like agriculture education health okay agri tech infrastructure but right now they have given them two years extra time period so that you can complete you can com uh, become compliant with this norm maybe students this would be extended after 2026 as well just understand what changes has been done coordination with rbi right now a nodal board will be created that will particularly coordinate with the urban cooperatives in the rbi in the department of rbi itself financially sound criteria these norms now rbi will be grading these cooperatives on the basis of financially sound cooperatives they can avail certain facilities now understand central cooperative banks are one classification state cooperatives are there particularly dedicated towards one state primary co cooperative banks like primary urban cooperative banks land development banks for the development of land what agricultural activity we are doing or for the land particularly the land which is neither arable neither agriculture can be done on it nor it was used for forestation therefore we can create some infrastructure on that therefore it is land development banks the committee is Sri N.S. Vishwanathan committee Sri N.S. Vishwanathan committee remember this on the recommendation of Sri N.S. Vishwanathan committee These changes, these norms have been introduced. So let's look at this question. With reference to urban cooperative banks in India, consider the following statements. Okay. They are supervised and regulated by local boards set up by the state governments. Okay. They can issue equity shares and preference shares. They were brought under the purview of Banking Regulation 1949 through an amendment in 1966. Okay, so these kind of questions you should prepare well. Some changes have been done right now. Angel tax. Next topic is angel tax. Angel tax is quite old topic. It was introduced back in 2012. Dekho, angel tax, on one hand, we want to promote our startup culture. On one hand, we are promoting our startup culture. Fata fat samasthe isko. Startups. Now, startups, they need funding. Funding from the different investors is needed. Now, when these funding is done by an investor, there could be two types of investors. One is called as angel investor. Angel investor. Another investor is called as venture capitalists. Venture capitalists. If angel investor is investing money into the startup, then right now the provision is it will be taxed 30% if the angel investor belongs to the resident Indians. Resident Indian. For the residents it has been 30%. Now you will understand why this you know angel tax has been there. Because it is on the angel investor not on the venture capitalist. Therefore this tax has been named as angel tax. Students what was happening previously that these startups were opening their own shell companies and basically buying these shares from here from the startups taking certain equities and then they were declaring that the startup could not work and hence it was a method to convert basically black money to the white money there was a problem into it okay so therefore what has happened star angel tax of 30 percent was there one word is there that is called as fair market valuation fair market valuation now how do you design there is one more called projected market valuation abhi shark tank chal raha hai. most of you would be watching the shark tanks how the the you know uh, small startups are pitching their projects how much valuation they are demanding sometimes even the sharks they are shocked 
that how much valuation you are asking into the crore 60 crore 70 crore 100 crore valuation as per that valuation they want to dilute their equities they want funds because of the projected market valuation they are projecting that going forward in the time the value of their share the value of their company is going to increase there they will be more and more profitable therefore in the beginning stage you can invest at that point therefore it is actually very difficult to calculate fair market valuation of any startup hence these problems were coming up now if angel investor is going to invest in startup government said that flat 30 percent taxation will be there Got this point? Now, students understand. Here, this is for the startups, and startups are not listed on the NSE or BSE stock exchanges. Okay, therefore, it is for all the unlisted companies. Listing to बहुत बाद में होगी. पहले तो आप अपनी equities dilute करके you are bringing certain capital so that you can expand, you can modernize your business. So it is for capital raised. by the unlisted companies not the listed companies this you will find as a statement in the prelims examination that angel tax is levied on the listed companies into the nsc some students might not know it it is for all the unlisted companies startup kaise list hoga wahan pe abhi okay objective is why this tax is provided it is to deter create a deterrence deter generation and use of unaccounted money that is black money unaccounted money through subscription of shares of a closely held company shell company bana lenge closely held company a principle is called as arms length length principle and basically they will acquire the share at very high market valuation and yet and at a value which is higher than the fair market valuation objective you understood itna samajhna hai recent changes some changes have been done that we need to understand this point is important hope you have understood it okay Prior to 2023 budget proposal, 2023 budget के पहले angel tax provisions were applicable only for the investments received from the resident investors, those who are resident in India. Angel tax was levied only to them, but not to the investors who are investing from Mauritius, from Singapore, from US. We were of that view कि हाँ उनको भी पैसा देने दो. We want to boost our startup culture. We are coming up with different schemes to boost our startup. India. Now, now the government has decided we will be taxing if the money is going to come from the abroad also as an angel investor, not as venture capitalist. However, the Finance Bill 2023 has now extended its applicability to non-resident investors as well. Non-resident investors, foreign investors as well. It is 30 percent tax which is levied on the fundings received by the startups from. external investors now basically from the resident investors also it is 30% and external investors it is 30% so the statement in the examination of the prelims will come that angel tax is levied only on the resident investors at a rate of 30% that statement is wrong it is levied not just for the resident investors but for the external investors as well with the same rate at 30% now you understand why this angel tax is being levied and what changes have been done here okay so let's look at the question which of the following is issued by the registered foreign portfolio investors to overseas investors who want to be part of indian stock market without registering themselves directly understand students in india what we are looking for is we are in need of cash we are in need of investment because we have a lot of potential for the development infrastructure development we are going to construct bridges roads dams so getting the point and these things are going to be profitable in the long term therefore we can return back the money also hence india wants money to be put into the market although people are going to get returns out of it also hence it is talking about basically participatory notes p notes you will we will talk about it also there are certain issues all the time government talk that we will be banning participatory notes soon but we need that from here basically it is a back channel of bringing the money to india invest in indian stock market but unaccounted unregistered forms are there it is participatory notes windfall tax dekho windfall tax is a retrospective tax you need to understand first of all it is a 
retrospective tax okay this windfall tax is levied if you if any corporation has gained more than their efforts into efficiency their efforts into branding their efforts into production because of certain unrelated circumstances unrelated circumstances for example all of sudden the demand for crude oil increased therefore it became profitable therefore it, there is nothing this particular company has done well there was not increase in any efficiency there was not increase in anything else but all of sudden it became profitable therefore we incur windfall tax wind windfall tax is incurred on windfall profit kafi zyada ho jata hai it is a higher tax levied by the government on the specific industries when they experience unexpected and above average profits and that too not because of their own efforts because they have not taken any efforts into it but rather because of certain unnatural circumstances they have got this and this is going to benefit the government if windfall taxes are put over there okay windfall tax is imposed on an industry's profits when it experiences sharp increase in revenue due to unrelated external events recently basically last year this uh, windfall tax was imposed recently it has been slashed it, recently india slashed the windfall tax on domestically pro produced crude oil to 4000 110 per ton from 6400 per ton iska hi ek correlation hai if you can understand it is called as capital gains tax on this upsc has asked a uh, question in the in the prelims examination what do you understand by capital gains tax this is windfall tax now let's understand gift tax so for example you have certain income but what if you get a gift also do you need to pay tax on that somebody has given you the gift do you need to pay the tax on that yes if it is a very costly product then you need to for example during the marriages there are certain exemptions for the from the gift tax but during the marriages you know the couple get a lot of gold a lot of jewelry purchase a lot of new you know assets also what happens that at the time of marriage whatever the person gets is exempted from the gift tax apart from that if a gift is given to a person by the family member close family member like your your or your spouse brother sister their siblings their mother father in laws from both the sides this is called as close family member then it is exempted from the gift tax but what if for example you people are aspiring bureaucrats for example somebody wants a favor from you and then other person says that sir or ma'am i will give you a parcel of land i'll give you give to you a flat into this apartment into this building or i may give you some car some gold then that gift can't remain unaccounted for how did you earn it although somebody earned it whatsoever manner because it was unaccount what work did you do there was certain work for which you should be paying something okay for which you should be paying something therefore the, it will be included into the gift tax now students understand le, le, uh, here right now what has been done gift tax is a tax of the transfer of a gift imposed on the donor now you understand the relaxation will stay as long as the strategic cbdt basically what has happened that central board of direct taxes direct taxes has said that if you are you have taken some shares from the strategic disinvestment basically government wants to sell its assets various assets are there government wants to sell its assets and if you are having the shares into that then it will be exempted from the gift tax CBDT has exempted buyers from gift tax when they acquire equity shares in public sector units PSUs but kab tak aisa nahi hai ki government ne usko strategic disinvestment ke naam pe bahut zyada uh, you know it has diluted its equity okay 
unless and until government is the owner it means that 51% equity should be with the government the relaxation will stay as long as the strategic investor remains strategic investor retains at least 51% in the psu after the takeover it means the government basically owns 51% of the psu okay after the takeover then the person is is exempted from the gift tax just understand this like a term that gift tax angel tax as we have talked about okay stable coins now just like rbi is you know regulating money monetary policy its one important job is currencies here students you need to understand on the cbdc central banking digital currency we will talk about it okay in the next lecture we will discuss about the central banking digital currency we will talk about e rupee as well e rupee point here is you know why this kind of central banking digital currency or e rupee is being launched iska iske basic what is the funda behind it stable coins just like bitcoin you have understood bitcoin bitcoin has been very much volatile its price has been not you know linked with anything neither it is backed by gold nor it is backed by any sovereign guarantee though we have 10 rupees 50 rupees 100 rupees note in our hands it is backed by the sovereign guarantee previously our currency was backed by gold as well okay so but bitcoin is totally based on some algorithmic value and it has been mined it is backed by just the people perceive certain value out of it people's perception sentiments it is its price is that volatile so abhi right now <clears throat> they have come up with stable coins stable coins are the coins where the value of a uh, decentralized this is called as decentralized finance decentralized finance defin decentralized finance this kind of currencies or cryptocurrencies are backed by certain real world value to fir kya hoga if we are linking this cryptocurrencies with some real world value then it will be relatively more stable relatively aisa nahi ki it will be consistent it will be constant relatively its variation into its value will be reduced because it is linked to some commodity getting this point here you can you can see that stable coins aim to provide an alternative to high volatility of the most popular cryptocurrencies including the bitcoin solana coin ethereum doge coins lot of coins were there but most of the other coins were deriving its value from the bitcoin itself okay unlike cryptocurrencies just like bitcoin stable coins prices remain steady in accordance with whichever fiat currency backs them jaise dekho if i talk here fiat collateralized it means that it is backed by certain currency uh, uh, this is a cryptocurrency backed by for example it could be backed by dollar it could be backed by rupees it could be backed by any other national currencies therefore it is called as fiat collateralized next could be commodity collateralized any commodity just like gold like silver platinum diamond it could be collateralized with a particular commodity if the value of that commodity changes then the value of this currency will also change crypto collateralized for example a currency can be collateralized with respect to the bitcoin if the prices of bitcoin changes its value will also change non collateralized it means that it could be directly released by the central banks as well no collateral only sovereign guarantee is there okay right now we have not talked about cbdc who is backing it it is going to be non collateralized de decentralized finance central banking digital currency okay you have we have tether usdt it is collateralized with us dollars and usd coin are the two leading stable coins right now their price valuation is not that price fluctuation is not that high okay so hope you understand this so thank you guys and let's meet in next lecture start revising current affairs as well as your static let's meet in the next lecture thank you